I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I welcome you here to worship at Christ Church United Methodist here in Charleston. I'm Pastor Jay. I'm lead pastor here at this church, and it's such an honor to be here today on this special Sunday when we celebrate All Saints Day. It's actually All Saints Day today, not just All Saints Sunday. It's a day in which we remember all those saints that have gone on to glory, particularly those from here at our local congregation as we light candles in memory and honor of them. We're thankful for those who have been able to gather with us in person and all of you who are joining with us through the wonders of the technology through our Facebook feed. For those of you that are here in the centrum, all of our liturgies will be on the screen where you can see the words and we invite you to to hum along to the hymns since we can't uh, sing as has been our custom. But we also invite you, if you are watching through Facebook, to go to our website at ccumwv.org where you can download a copy of our bulletin and follow with all of our liturgies and all of the things that we will be doing today as we gather in worship. So we invite you now to center yourselves in this space or wherever you are as we gather to worship our Lord and celebrate the wonders of the resurrection. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Church United Methodist on an absolutely gorgeous autumn morning. Please join me as you are able in the call to worship. I think that you um, are allowed to do that, right? (laughs) Uh, Today is a day that is held in tension. We are surrounded by the past, yet looking toward the future. A past that reminds us of the blessings and presence of God with us in joys as well as in sorrow. A future filled with promises. A future when death and mourning and crying and pain will be no more. And God proclaims, see, I am making all things new. Today we worship the one who was is and is to come. Let us worship in word, song, and service. And again, for those present, please remember you can tap your feet, you can hum, but you can't sing. But on our live stream, please join this remarkable hymn.
Please join me in this morning's opening prayer. O God of all people of all times, we are here in your house seeking your presence in our time of remembrance. We honor those who have finished the race and have received their reward. But at the same time, we come here seeking you, O God, who was a constant companion, a source of strength for those we honor. We too need your guiding presence as we continue our race. God, we pray that your mighty presence will be felt by all who are gathered here and at home this morning as we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Amen. For those that are watching the live stream, please uh, take a moment to greet each other and share the peace of Christ by typing the peace of Christ be with you in the comment section of the live stream. Thank you. Oh, children of God, on the count of three, do you think we can all say a round of that rousing good morning to all the saints gathered, all the saints in heaven, all the saints surrounding us now? One, two, three, good morning! It is a good morning. Today is a really special day. Now, it's a special day anytime and everywhere that we can gather together, but some days are a little more special than others. Today is a special day in the church called All Saints Day. Children, can you say that with me? All Saints Day. Did you know that you are a saint? All of us here are saints. The Bible says... Saints are what the people of the church called each other. That means you are a saint and I am a saint and we are saints together. You see, I, I am in the Bible. All who follow Jesus, who seek to follow God and love each other, they are saints. Now, Sometimes you might hear someone called Saint So-and-So, or you might know a friend that goes to a church named Saint Peter or Saint Mark. Those churches are named after people like that followed Jesus named Peter and Mark. Saints sometimes are famous people who did wonderful things in, in love of God to their neighbor, and we remember them by calling them saints. But here in the church, we also sometimes will hear people say about people that have died this year or recently that he or she was such a saint. It's because we love that person and we know how much they truly wanted to follow Jesus. And they helped us to follow Jesus. And so, I know you're a saint because you all try to follow Jesus too, don't you? We all try to love God and love our neighbors and even love our enemies. And so, 
these people that we love and we call saints, we do things to try to remember them and honor them because they meant so much to us and the love they shared with us touched us and the world so deeply. Today, in our worship service, we're going to do something special to remember them on this All Saints Day. We're going to say their name, and behind me, we're going to light a candle so that we can help remember them. And we're going to light with the Christ candle because they're with Jesus. And where Jesus is, we are too. Jesus is a wonderful, loving presence that holds us all together. And so, I want to tell you, I give thanks for you, all the children of God. You are saints. And I say this because I remember all the different ways every week that you help me follow Jesus, just like the saints we're remembering. And did you know Jesus knew the children were going to be saints? He even told us adults, right, that we are to be like children for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And so this morning, saints, saint children, will you please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for those we love, for those with you. Please give them a hug for us. In Jesus' name, and let's say a big amen. Amen. Thank you all for taking a moment to learn and remember these loved ones in our life. We come now to our first reading of the day, which comes to us from the book of Revelations, and it's found in chapter 7. So, it's going to be verses 9 through 17. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. And then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson is also a New Testament lesson. It comes to us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died for this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. 
for the Lord himself with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Most loving and gracious God, as we gather in your house on this very special day, remembering our loved ones and all the saints, I pray as always that the simple words of my mouth and these meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you ever and always are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The year of 2020 has been challenging, hasn't it? We've experienced so much, staying at home for weeks on end, working from home, schooling from home, electronic meetings, I've been on Zoom so much I don't know what to do, online worship, and separation from our family and friends. We know the the ongoing frustration during these months of ongoing struggle. And we miss doing the things that we used to do. The dinner out at a fine restaurant or or concerts or, or football games with full tailgating parking lots and crowds. Family gatherings, weddings. The, the list goes on and on. But I think perhaps nothing has hurt more in these days of COVID than the fact that we have not been able to gather together as a full community of faith to lay our loved ones to rest. Many of the people whose names we'll be remembering and lighting candles in honor of on this All Saints Day were ushered home without a a regular funeral or memorial service of of the full gathered church. And this is hard. It's hard on you as families. It's hard on us pastors. And it's hard on our church community. But the thing is, in spite of all this hardship, we are able to gather today on All Saints Day and remember them, remembering our loved ones in their life of witness, remembering our saints here at Christ Church along with all the saints of glory. And as Paul tells us in our lesson from Thessalonians, we gather today not in sorrow, we gather today in hope. For as he says, we do not mourn as those without hope. Oh, we mourn. Oh, we mourn. We we miss our loved ones. I mean, their passing has left empty chairs at the table and it's left holes in our hearts which are only slowly beginning to heal and those jagged edges becoming less raw. We miss them. And we mourn our loved ones. We mourn these saints who have died. But we don't mourn as those who are lost in despair. We don't mourn as a people without hope. We we don't mourn like many around us. We, We mourn a little differently. For you'll notice today is not a day which is marked by black or of Good Friday and mourning. But rather, it's a day marked by white and the gold of Easter and celebration. For, for this is a day we do not merely acknowledge death, but we place it in its proper context. You see, as a Christian people, we gather today in praise and worship of the one who has given power over death and the one whose own death and resurrection, in fact, gives witness to the promise that God will one day bring an end to this reign of death and cause mourning and suffering to cease and will wipe the tear from our eyes. For you see, it is from the light of Easter that we confront the darkness of death. And because we are blessed to see the world from the other side of Christ's resurrection, we gain strength. And we gain strength and we gain courage not to deny death because earthly death comes. But rather, we have courage and strength to defy death. And that's right, defy death. For death does not have the ability to overshadow and distort our lives because of this promise. And we, and we celebrate that promise. That promise of life. That promise of eternal life. For you see, in Christ rising, it demonstrates the promise that death never has the last word. And on this All Saints Day, as on Easter, we recall most powerfully that we are those persons 
who have been joined by baptism into Christ's death and resurrection. And this means a couple of things for us. If we allow this promise to, to be ours. One is that first, death need no longer terrify us. That's right, death need not terrify us because the promise shared of Christ's resurrection, because of that promise, we can look death in the eye and not be afraid. Because of our Lord's power over the darkness of death and sin, we know there is no more power in that. That's the foundation of our faith. As Christians gathered here today in the Centrum and those across the world through the wonders of technology of Facebook and radio, indeed all across the world, Christians are gathering today to celebrate that promise. That promise of eternal life. The promise that death is not the end. And the promise that death does not have the final word. And for this reason, while we mourn the death of our loved ones, we also celebrate their triumph. We celebrate their victory as they now rest from their labors and live with Christ in glory. And secondly, the other thing we have is we also recognize in this promise that life no longer terrifies us either. For you see, as Christians, our whole life, our entire life is now sanctified. That is, meaning made holy and given a purpose. And through God's promise to be with us and for us, and then to use us and all of our gifts to God's glory, we can celebrate that. Just as the saints whom we gather to remember today. For you see, as John mentioned, saints are not only those persons in the Bible or church history who did great things, nor are they simply those who, who died for their faith, like the martyrs. They are saints, of course. And saints are not only those who are of such moral courage and kindness and discipline that they are great examples that we cannot touch. But rather, saints are also, and especially all of those who have been baptized in Christ, all of those who are baptized, them and us. For you see, our word saint, in fact, comes from the Greek word meaning holy ones, a word which stems from a Hebrew one meaning set apart, meaning those who are set apart for God's use. And in holy baptism, each one of us is set apart. We're set apart and we're consecrated, we're named, we're called, we're commissioned by God to be God's children, to be God's partners and co-workers in the world, those people, that is, whom God will use to achieve God's will. And as that vision of John and Revelation reminds us, all the saints are gathered around that throne of glory. And you'll notice in that text that they're people from all walks of life. They're people from all nationalities, all ethnicities. And as one of the elders in Revelation asked John, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? And John shrugs his shoulders and says he doesn't know so the elder answers his own question he says they are not necessarily the best and the brightest the most sophisticated or the most successful but instead they're the ones who have come out of the great ordeal they've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb out of the great ordeal they have come out of life's trials and temptations distractions and interruptions they are people pushed, pulled, and sometimes pulverized by earthly events like all of us. Job loss, marital problems, conflict with neighbors, illness, pain, and yes, even COVID. They've done their best to remain close to God and to be faithful. They're a group of ordinary people from the past, the present, and the future who have a relationship with God they're not perfect, sinless people, nor are they especially powerful people. But they are a people who are profoundly and mysteriously connected. For they are people who are linked directly to God through the grace and power of this Lamb, Jesus Christ. And as Lisbia Scott wrote in a popular children's hymn, I sing a song for the saints of God. It's in our hymnal. We didn't sing it today. But it says, they love their Lord so dear, so dear. And God's love made them strong. 
God's love made them strong. God's love made them strong. And that same love makes us strong today. Makes us strong to face the challenges of our day. Makes us strong to face the tragedy of death and loss. And makes us strong to face the future unafraid. You know, as we remember them and their lives, we also recognize that that same power that gives them new life and glory gives us strength and new life here today. And not only that, but in this mysterious and mystical union of the communion of saints, we remain connected to them in and through that love. You know, when I served some of the rural churches out there, and some of you may have been there, they didn't have altar like ours that's that's square. There was often just a a pulpit and a a little altar table. And then then this kneeling altar made kind of a big half moon around it. And sometimes I looked at that and I wondered, I said, well, why, why is this a, a half moon? Why don't they just make a, a square altar, you know, like this? And then I was reminded that it was structured that way so that we would always remember that we're only seeing half the circle. That the rest of the saints are around the rest of that circle. And then when we gather here to, to pray and when we gather to celebrate communion, they're with us. They're there around the throne of God just as we gather around the throne of God. And what we are experiencing today is just a foretaste of that glory when we'll all be able to be there. And so today as we, as we celebrate, as we, as we light candles, and then as we share in the sacrament of communion, I invite you to remember that, that we are connected. For as that old Appalachian hymn sings, the circle's unbroken. It just seems that way. And we just need to open our eyes and open our hearts to remember that promise. A promise that goes from here into eternity. A promise of love and strength that can give us hope in our day and in all these challenges. Just as it gave hope to them. And not only that, that it is in and through that love that we are never alone. Never alone alone, always connected with God and connected with them who have gone before. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Now comes our, our time of remembrance and celebration. Brothers and sisters, today we've gathered to remember individuals who were once a part of our life here at Christ Church, but are now part of the church eternal. We thank God for their lives and witness among us. Kenneth Cameron Legg. Hilda Francis Burns Vi, Rancel Hayes Sr., Eva May McNear Kennedy, Reverend Harry P. Light. Martha Bradley, Harry Wallace, Robert Bob Smith Craig, Jenny Lee Kessel Cross. Patricia Pat Clark, Margaret Marge Kaysen, Edward Allen Ward, Jean R. Warndorf. Betty Warner, Lucy W. Lewis, Linda Darby, and Rosalie Marks Atkins. Now I invite you to join with me in our prayer of commendation. Ever-living God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved we lived our lives together. Their memory is a blessing forever. Months or even years may have passed, and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them. Though the bitter grief has softened, a duller pain abides. For the place where once they stood is empty now. The links of life are broken, but the links of love and longing cannot break. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We see them now with the eye of memory, their faults forgiven, their virtues grown larger. So does goodness live and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names. Their memory is a blessing forever. And we remember as well the members who but yesterday were part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the tradition of our faith, for now the task is ours. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We give you thanks that they now live and reign with you. As a great cloud of witnesses, they surround us with their blessings and offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving. They are alive forevermore. Amen.
Amen. I'd like to thank uh, Bob Morris for pre-recording that song for us so we could have it as a part of our service and for Celia for sharing her gifts of dance with us. And I invite you to remember those in your hearts and mind in prayer as I light our prayer candle. Those of you that are joining us online and through Facebook, we invite you to place your prayer concerns in the comment section so we can add them to our ongoing prayer list here at Christ Church. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, as we gather here today and in the light of the flames of these saints, we give you thanks for their life and witness among us, yet also with them recognize that it is only through your power and love that we are able to make it through hard times. And Lord, these times around us have been hard as we've lost those whom we light candles for, as we wrestle with this ongoing virus and its challenges. But in all of this, O oh God, give us your strength. Remind us of your promise, that power over death, and most especially that wondrous power of resurrection. May it sustain us as we move through our days, just as you sustain them as they move through theirs. May that strength and promise of our connection with them bring us new hope and life in these days that we face here and now and in the future. For, O oh God, we know that it is through the power and love of your Son, Jesus, that one who came and walked and lived among us, that one who rose from the dead, that we too have that power, that power to rise up and to be strong in face of the many things that come before us. So we pray a special prayer today, O oh Lord, in honor of these, your saints, who are with you in glory. We offer special prayers for those who are struggling today with, with illness, that they might be healed and strengthened through your power. 
We pray most especially that those who mourn might know your comforting presence and that power and promise of resurrection. And we pray for our world that seems so divided, trusting that through the power of your grace we can be a united people, a people united in your love and power, and that these things which divide us will be removed through that grace and strength that only you offer. And we ask these things today in the name of that one who rose from the dead, Jesus the Christ, for in him is all hope and glory. Amen. And now as we prepare for our offering, we invite you to you know, make your offerings there uh, on the website. There are things showing you how to uh, donate to us. We know we've collected the offering for those of you in person as you came in. You can also mail those in. This is the first Sunday of the month, so we're also collecting our special offering uh, for our assistance ministry. Through our text to give, you can text assistance ministry, and those funds go to help those needing help with their utilities. For those of you that are here in the in-person service, uh, we invite you to send those in. We will not be collecting things at the door since you'll be exiting uh, from different doors today as part of our protocols during this time of COVID. But now let us all offer ourselves and all that we are to our God.
seated. I invite you to join with me now in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children and all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He again gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. Renew our communion with all Your saints, especially those whom we name before You. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, those saints set apart for God's glory, let us share the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, this is the body of Christ. The one broken that we might have life. This is the cup of salvation poured out for us gathered here and for all people. For the forgiveness of our sins. Now I invite you to take the little cup that you receive to share in this sacrament. You peel the top and there's the wafer. It's kind of two layers. I have trouble with it. Did last time. If you can get it out, this is the body of Christ. 
take and eat. When you peel back the next layer, you'll find the juice. And we invite you to pull your mask back and take and drink and then put your mask back. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this mystery, the simple mystery of the bread and the cup, that glorious banquet of which we but have a foretaste here gathered, knowing that one day we will all gather together at that great banquet with all those who have gone before us, all the saints down through the ages and those whom we remember today. And in this moment, may we have a touch of that grace through the mystery of your love. As we rise from the table, may we take that strength with us to face the future unafraid and in the strength and power of your resurrection. Amen. Now we can hum our hymn of dedication.
Now as we prepare to leave this place and end our service, the ushers will direct you to the doors. Those of you that are here for our in-person service will be exiting through the doors of the centrum here rather than through the narthex. Also, for those of you that are in line, we have consecrated some of the small cups here on the altar in this service. I will be here at the door from 12.30 to 1.30 if you'd like to come by and pick up a, a cup to share in the communion with a brief liturgy, which you can read at home that keeps us connected to this body of Christ. But now, my sisters and brothers, as we rise from this table, as we go forth into the world, may we go forth trusting in the love of God, that love through Christ that connects us with all the saints who have gone on to glory and gives us the power to face the future unafraid. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.